and we are recording. Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Adriana Popescu. I am here with Antonieta, who is living in Mexico, and we have Lillian with us who's doing translation. Gracias. And hola to all our Spanish-speaking friends. We are also doing live translation into Spanish. Um, Antonieta, would you like to get started? She's going to ask me some questions. We're going to have a conversation around what have you decided you cannot change? Yes, thank you very much, Adriana. I was uh, yesterday getting in contact with other people who is will, are willing to join the Zoom. And actually, we tend to have many, many thoughts about uh, problems in our life. And we tend to get this information of, oh, I cannot change that. So the right, the same moment when we say, I cannot change that, that, we freeze the energy. So what can you say? What can you speak about <laughs> that when we freeze the energy, when we, when we decide we cannot change? Yes. So I'm going to speak about access. In this, in this Zoom, I'm going to talk about access consciousness. Um, this is a modality that I'm a certified facilitator of. Also a talk to the entities certified facilitator. And I've been using these tools for the last 10 plus years. Um, I do other modalities as well, but today we're just gonna be talking about access. So from the access perspective, your point of view creates your reality, right? So whatever it is in your reality that you may think is not quite working for you or that you perhaps uh, have decided you cannot change, if you believe that to be true, that is what you will create, right? So for example, a lot of people might have judgments about their bodies, right? I don't like the way my body looks. I'm too fat, I'm too this, da, 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 da. And they have this point of view that I can't change it. I've tried every diet, I've tried exercising, da, 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 this, I can't change this. If you believe that to be true, then your body will not change. When we make judgments, when we come to conclusions, when we have points of view, we contract the energy, okay? And when you have contracted energy and it's like this, it's like being constipated, okay? It's very difficult to get any movement going. So what we want to do is we wanna create from space. And in order to have space, we need to have allowance. Allowance is being, rather than having a point of view, having judgments, it's in being in a state of allowance, allowing things to be as they are without judging them. Paradoxically, when you get an allowance, that's when things can actually change because you are at that point in a more neutral state. When you are neutral, change becomes easy because you don't get attached to a particular outcome. When you have a projection, an expectation, a judgment, you want things to go a certain way and you're attached to that outcome. You are creating polarity or an energetic, emotional charge around something. And from that space, again, being contracted, it's going to be very difficult to create. Wow, really? So we tend to, to move forward or to do, to build our lives with polarity actually. For instance, if I want to have something, uh, I want to change and I want to, to change in my direction. So how I really want to change that. So this is a polarity actually. Yeah. So, so how to get rid of this polarity or this point of view that me, I want to control that. Mm -hmm. I decided I cannot change. However, if it, that change, I want this to change in my direction, in my world, or with my right. power, let's say. So. Right. So, okay. So first of all, let's do a clearing. So we have the access consciousness clearing statement. I'm not going to explain a lot of detail around what that is. You want to find out, go to theclearingstatement.com. And as some of you who are fans of access know, the clearing statement has just changed this week. For the first time in many years, we have added a section, you know, and the clearing statement is all acronyms. There's a section at the end before beyond called POVADS, P-O-V-A-D, points of view, 
that we are avoiding or defending, okay? So it's just another type of energy that when we do the clearing statement, we wanna bring up the energies of that, having those points of view that you're avoiding and defending. This might be part of what's keeping something stuck and unable, you know, you unable to change it. I'm gonna include that as we do clearings today. So think of something that you guys have been wanting to change, but have not been able to. And I will say, don't pick something that involves somebody else per se, because you can't change someone else. We cannot control other people and what they choose. So pick something that's more something you actually do have control over with yourself or with your body, something like that, okay? And now all the judgments you have already made, all of the decisions, judgments, computations and conclusions you have already come to about that thing and how it can't change or how you can't change it Will you please destroy and uncreate that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. And all of the projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections that you have about that thing, how you think it should look, how it should show up, all of the shoulds around it, the judgments of that, Will you destroy and uncreate all of them? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. Okay, so first we want to clear the judgments and the expectations we already have. Right? Um, and then the other thing is, I mean, who does it even belong to? Like you could even start with a more basic question and access. That's one of the main tools that we use for a lot of different things, which is who does this belong to? This thing that you're wanting to change, are you wanting to change it because that's your choice and that's what you want? Or is it because you're trying to change to make someone else happy or to fit in with everyone else, right? Where is this desire to change the thing really coming from, right? A lot of people, a lot of women say, I want a partner who's tall, dark, and handsome. Do you really? Or were you just told that as a little girl, right? Who is the person that really desires that? So I would even actually ask and make sure that what you're asking for to change is something you actually desire. The second piece is ask and receive, right? So if we want to change something, we need to ask a question. How do I change this? Um, what's required of me here? What would I like to have happen instead? Uh, the art of asking questions and access, questions empower us. They expand the energy and open up possibilities, especially when we ask a question like, what else is possible here? What choices do I have available? We're opening and expanding. When we come to an answer or a conclusion, we contract the energy and we stop the flow of energy, uh, this is, which is what you're asking, right? So if I am, am saying I desire more money, so um, how can I get more money? If I come to a conclusion, like I'm gonna to have to get a second job or a third job, just by deciding that, I have limited the range of possibilities and money will not come to me any other way. My point of view now has created the reality that the only way I'm gonna make more money is if I have more work, more, more another job. If instead, you know, I ask the universe, what else is possible for having more money? What other revenue streams are available? Now I'm engaging the universe to contribute to my ask, okay? So I'm asking for something more. I'm asking for something greater. Universe, how can you contribute to that? And then who knows how the, and then I let go of my attachment of how it's going to show up or when it's going to show up. And I'm willing to let the universe surprise me. Maybe I'm going to discover money on the ground. Maybe I'm going to get a check I wasn't expecting in the mail Maybe I'm going to win the lottery. Maybe someone will give me money. It shows up in mysterious ways. Some of you have heard a crazy story about how I once needed $5,000 for an unexpected tax bill. And I ended up the, like, and I asked, okay, what's it going to take for this five grand to show up? The next day I got in a car accident and I'm pretty sure it was my fault. Through a crazy turn of events, I ended up getting um, paid out for the car accident $4,937, right? Who thought it would show up that way? But because 
after the accident occurred, I asked more questions like, what's right about this I'm not getting? And what would it take for this situation to turn out greater than I could ever imagine? I got the money that I needed. Very unexpected, right? So, uh, so ask and receive is a really, it's like a law of the universe. When we're asking a question on a, on a quantum physics level, we're activating these quantum entanglements to start shifting things in the universe to get what it is that we are asking for. The trick is we also have to be willing to receive it. <laughs> so once again, if you have judgments or points of view, like I don't like I'd like to have more money, but I don't think I really deserve it. Or if I have more money, it's going to create more problems. Da, da, da. If you have points of view like that, those judgments will also create a blockage to receiving the money. So even if the universe is trying to give it to you, if you have that judgment that I don't deserve it, or in some way you're not willing to receive it, it cannot come through. It will be blocked, right? Or you'll find a way to sabotage it. You'll get the money and then you'll lose it all or something like that. So, yeah. Ask and receive. We're going to put this. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so ask and receive. And what we can do also in this call is we can do an energy pull at the end um, of the call. And... I'll show you guys how you can energetically invoke your ask and receive through the art of energy pulls, which is something we use a lot in access to create things and to change them. So I know yeah, that was a long answer to your question, but. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, what I like very much is also that this, um, this um, form of asking without judgment, because I was before asking, or oh, I want to change that in my direction, in my way, I want to have the way I really want to, you know? So, and if I put a question like, how would it be much greater? Which will be the greatest contribution for me in this? Yes. Or with this problem? So this is really uh, some, something great for me. So, because we tend to, to put our intention already and things, may may come in a different way as you said this is this is uh, great and uh, we are going to appreciate the energy pool at the end of of our facebook live right now so uh, let's check in if we have now we have samantha and lucia welcome to the to the zoom and welcome to the zoom uh, to nora also to the spanish zoom so let's see if there is another question from the audience Maybe Lillian, you have another question or we have here Lucero and Lucia, Samantha, if you have a question, you can put in the chat or open your mic. Yeah, no? I, I wanted to clear um, what your experience was with the car accident when you asked for the 5,000 that you had the accident. Then later on, after you made the accident, can you uh, describe, you, you said that you, I mean, you had to, you got the accident to get the money that you were asking, but later on, you say something that you made some clearance that I didn't get it. It was just, yeah. it was right after the accident happened that day for the first few hours, I did what most people would do, which is like, I can't believe I did this. I'm such an idiot. I now I'm going to have to pay money. My insurance is going to go up. Notice how there was no question there. I just came to conclusion about all the terrible things that were going to happen because I was pretty sure I created this car accident, right? And then I realized I was doing that. I realized I was going into judgment, that I was making myself wrong. And so what I did was I um, asked questions, what's right about this situation with the accident that I'm not getting? And what would it take for it to turn out greater than I could ever imagine? And I never could have imagined that it would have gone in the crazy direction that it went to where not only <laughs> did my insurance go down, I got a refund and I got all that money for the car. Um, that was very unexpected to me. I didn't even know it was possible for it to go like that. But because I it's because I asked those questions. Oh, and they, by the way, couldn't figure out whose fault it was. So there was no, they, they made it equal. I didn't get penalized because it was my fault. So, uh, you know, it's, it's what else is possible beyond even what we can imagine. That's really, I think, when we start getting into the magic of creation, 
and the magic of access consciousness because it allows us, it empowers us with these tools um, to create from space and energy and consciousness rather than from force or push or judgment, which is how so many of us are, you know, beating yourself up. We think that's the way we're supposed to change things. And that never works. You know, when people are beating themselves up with like a diet and a rigid form of exercise, I must lose this weight. That doesn't work because you are contracting so much energy and you're walking that into your body, possibly even into like the fat cells. You know, if you are dealing with excess weight, how are you going to release that if you're still holding on to all those judgments? How is that energy going to shift? Judgment is the glue that holds, holds molecules, even in your body, in place. You know, if you do, there's some very interesting access body, cl body oriented classes called SE, the Energetic Synthesis of Structural Embodiment, or EMT, Energetic Manual Therapy. That's all about working with the fascia. The fascia is kind of the connective tissue that surrounds all your muscles and bones and tendons. And they talk about how we lock judgments into our body all the way into the fascia. And when we're releasing this fascia through myofascial release and with the energy, it's like we are inviting the release of those judgments and we're inviting the tissues to reconfigure themselves in different ways. <clears throat> that doesn't, that's not possible when you've got judgments locking energies into place so they can't move. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions or comments you guys might have? Maybe from the Spanish chat, uh, Lilian, do we have a question? Not really. Okay. Do you have a question for me, Antonieta? Yes. Uh, oh, just a minute. No, I have... In Espanol, okay. Uh, Lilian? You can I open think, your mic. I think she's getting the question. Yeah. Yo hago preguntas y el universo me da las respuestas. ¿Cómo encuentro las respuestas y dónde? ¿Cómo sé yo que me está respondiendo el universo? You translate, Antonieta, or you? Yeah, I can translate. So the question uh, of our Spanish chat uh, Zoom is: <clears throat> If I ask to the universe. So how do I know that I am getting the answer or the responses or the receiving part? So I ask, you, you said before, ask and receive. So yes. the question of, of, of our um, uh, per person is, how can I know or where do I receive this information, answers and uh, energy? Right. So when we're asking a question in access, we are not necessarily looking for an answer and we're not looking for an immediate response right away. Right. Because it doesn't necessarily work that way. So I ask a question, what would it take for the money to show up? Right. I needed the five thousand dollars. What would it take for this money to show up right away? I did say right away. Um, so. I didn't get an awareness in that moment. Nothing came to me. You know, and then a day or two later, boom, car accident. So is I asked when the car accident, once I got out of the judgment and wrongness, I asked, is this the, I think I may have also asked, is this what I'm asking for? Is this the change that I'm asking for? At some point when the, when I realized that, oh, I could actually get money for this, you know, then I started asking, oh, is this what's showing up? in response to my ask for more money so that I had that sense because it was such an unusual thing that came out of nowhere. I asked, what is this with this accident? And I think I got the awareness that, oh, I'm going to get some money out of this. And that, how cool is that? So, uh, but when you ask something, it may take a while for what you're asking for to show up. So if you were asking, let's say, for a certain kind of job that, you know, would be more fulfilling to you than what you are currently doing, it may be that someone is still in that position and it's not yet time for you to have that job. So you can be asking the universe, you know, what would it take for a greater job to show up? And it may take some time for the person who's in the job to leave. Maybe they're going to, you know, get another job. Maybe they're going to get 
pregnant. Maybe they're going to move away somewhere. You know, that hasn't happened yet. So the possibility is not yet there. So you also have to be patient. Um, and when something does show up, does it match the energy of what you have asked for? So I could have asked when the car accident happened and, you know, the insurance was like, well, we could do this or this that, you know, they gave me a few options and I was like, okay, well, what one is going to match what I'm asking for? It was to go a certain way. Okay. Uh, with it to make a certain choice that matched that energy. So you can ask questions like, oh, so like, okay, I did this with office space. Let me give you an actual example. So I needed to move a few years ago. Uh, they were not renewing the lease and I needed to move. And when I would look for places on Craigslist, I had already asked for what I wanted. I want an office that's bright and sunny and that has you know, tall ceilings and there's something pretty to look at outside. I'd said a few things I wanted. And then when I would look at the offices for rent, like on Craig, here in America, we have something called Craigslist. When I would look at the pictures of these offices, I would say, does this match the energy of what I asked for, right? And the ones that did, I would call them and say, can I come see it and da, da, da. And if it didn't match the energy, if it was heavy and contracted when I asked that question, I wouldn't even bother to go look at the place. So you can use questions like, is this what I'm asking for that's showing up? What is the energy? And look for following that energy. Creation and change is not necessarily a linear process, right? It can be very roundabout. So I don't have an exact answer to that question, but be willing to ask more questions. Is this what I'm asking for showing up? Today, I woke up with a lot of intensity in my body, a lot of discomfort. So I start, did I, you know, did I eat something my body didn't like? Is, uh, you know, is my body sore from working out the other day? I get a no, I get a no. Um, is this the change I've been asking for? Because I've been asking to step into greater and I get a yes. So that doesn't make maybe logical sense. My body is, seems to be going through some change. I asked for those changes. Now it's showing up. Now I know, okay, then what would it take to have more ease? Because this is kind of uncomfortable, but yay, what I'm asking for is showing up in this weird, uncomfortable way. And what would it take for me to have ease and allowance for this discomfort? Thank you. Yeah. So what would it take also for us to clear the whatever blocks we have so that we don't receive this, this uh, information, this energy uh, that right. we, the universe is sending us? Actually. Yeah, there's a clearing we can use also in access. Everything you're unwilling to perceive, know, be, and receive about the issue that you've decided you can't change, will you destroy and uncreate all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine, shorts, boys, povets, and beyonds. Because sometimes it's that we, um, there's something there we don't want to see. You know, there's something there we're like, eh, I don't want to look at it. And so when you do that clearing, it's sometimes then the awareness will come. Remember, the point of a question is to get an awareness, not an answer. There's a difference. Remember, the answer is going to stop the flow. The awareness is going to give you information and what and what else. You might get multiple awarenesses of possibilities, right? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, if there is no other question from the room or from the Spanish chat, so we can move forward. We can go for our energy pool. What do you think, yeah. Adriana? So sure. shall we? Let's do, okay. Yeah, let's do an energy pull. Okay. So everyone choose something that you would like to change. Okay. Again, don't pick something that was, depends on someone else changing because we can't control them. Something you'd like to change, maybe with your finances, maybe something with your body, um, maybe something with your job, something with uh, how you feel about yourself anything, okay? And then let's just pock and pod, anything we've already decided, judged or concluded about it. I kind of did that clearing before, but let's just do it again. All right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. 
And what you wanna put in the ball is what you would like, okay? So get the energy of what you would like instead. So I would like to look this way. I would like to feel this way. I would like this, at least this amount of money to show up, okay? And then imagine in front of you, there's a ball and you're gonna put whatever it is that you are asking for in the ball, okay? So everyone take a moment to do that. Specifically, you're wanting to put, you don't even have to really be super defined with it. You could just get the energy of it. You know, it feels light, it feels expansive. And, you know, when I'm, when this change has occurred, I feel good about myself. I feel, uh, you know, happy. I feel orgasmic, you know, whatever it is, just get the sense of kind of all of that energy and you put it in the ball. Okay. And now pull energy from all over the universe to the ball, through the ball, through you. And this is really like giving, giving it juice, right? Like giving what's in the ball energy, bringing it to life. So pulling energy from all over the universe through that ball, let it come through you also. Okay, and we pull and we pull and we go expand out and we get even bigger and bigger and pull more and more and more and more and more. And more. Okay, really bringing that thing to life. And now let little trickles of that unique energy that's in your ball to go out in the world and, and ping all the people, places, things, and situations that match that vibration and that can contribute to it actualizing in your world. And then pull all of that in as well. Let, let, the, let those people, places, and things also get pulled in to the ball to you and all of that while you're still trickling little you know, bits of that energy and pulling even harder. So it's like you've become a magnet. You're pulling in the energy of the money. You're pulling in the energy of those people, places, and things that will contribute to actualizing this. Yeah? Okay, so pull, flow, pull, flow, and then you let it go. And when you let it go, you basically said, okay, universe, I've put in my request. Now I'm willing to receive. So anything that doesn't allow you to receive this that you are asking for, let's destroy and uncreate all of that. Right? Wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys and beyonds, povads and beyonds. And then we let go of all of our attachments to when it's going to show up, how it's going to show up, what it's going to look like. Let the universe surprise you. What if you and the universe are co-creators in this, okay? You put in your ask and it's your job now to receive. The universe's job is to deliver it to you, okay? So you can't go, hey, TikTok, come on universe, where's my thing that I'm asking for? You can't pock and pod that. Be willing to receive it on whatever timeline the universe is able to deliver it. And it may not be your timeline. And then look for the energy of what you put in the ball. Okay. And it, and again, this might show up in a nonlinear kind of way. I have free time today. Where can I go? What can I do that would match the energy of what I put in that ball? And you may get the awareness to go for a walk, to go to the beach, um, to call a certain person, follow that energy because you don't know what will come next, right? You might talk to someone who has an idea for a job. Or you might be walking on the beach and you get an aha, some sort of idea will come to you, right? So even though it may not make sense, follow the energy. I, some of you might've heard the story. I needed boxes for my books to move the office. And I said, what would it take to get some free boxes? I didn't wanna pay for them. And so a few hours later, I'm driving home and I drive down the wrong street. And, 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 and I had time to turn back around. I said, no, no, no. If I'm turning down the street, it might be for a reason. Sure enough, a nice pile of neatly folded boxes that someone had just moved to move, used to move in were sitting there right on the curb waiting for me to come right by and pick them up, right? If I had not followed the energy of the wrong turn, I wouldn't have found the boxes. So then you follow the energies when they match what it is that you've asked for. That's how you know it's showing up. Are these the boxes I asked for? Yes, they were. <laughs> so, or if a person or an opportunity shows up, is this matching the energy of what's in that ball? 
Ah, yes, amazing. Thank you. So we don't care about when that arrives. So oh. we, we do care about our awareness, the awareness that we are asking for yes. right now. So um, thank you very much, everyone. So we, we have the coming next week, this week, this week, weekend yes. we have our foundation class adriana so mm -hmm. i look forward for it yes so yes i'll be doing a little foundation. bit about the foundation yeah um i have an access foundation class it's where you learn a lot of these really basic tools that we use you get a nice big manual um basically i think if you you know you have all you need in this one class to really create change in any area of your life we talk about Lots of different areas, bodies, relationships and sex, money, business, health, you know, all different kinds of things. We talk about all of that and you get tools and clearings to help you shift whatever that is that has not been working or that you want to create a change with. We give you the tools to do that. And really, always these classes are about empowering people to know what they know, to know that they know um, and really stepping into being the creator of your life. Um, there's, it's, a, it's a very empowered piece of work, um, and I really like teaching this class, um, and it will be the last time I'm teaching this class for a while. I am taking a break, um, so I will be facilitating online and in San Francisco locally here uh, the next two weekends. I split it over this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and the following weekend, Saturday and Sunday. <clears throat> so if you'd like to join us, please feel free to reach out to me or to Antonietta or to Lillian or any of the Spanish promoters, because we also will have Spanish translation for this class. Um, let us know soon so that we can get all the arrangements set. Um, and we'd love to have you there. And thank you for tuning in today. Um, if you signed up for this, um, you will get the recordings for it in English and in Spanish. And gracias to everyone in the Spanish speaking communities. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you to everyone and hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Adriana.